Black Love yeah. fam and first time fam, welcome to another edition of Man to Man, a part of the Black Love Podcast Network. I'm David Wazicki, General Manager of Black Love. And listen, today we got a brother who's written a lot of songs you might have heard of. You still might be humming. I know for me, I hum one of these and it's one of my... Um, what one one of those songs you don't expect, but the um the Jace Shantz joint um down 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 anyway, um that that's a little my <laughs> little my vocal work, um but he's worked with some real artists that have real vocals such as Carl Thomas, Joe, Jay Jay Sean, and the list goes on and on. He's also co-founder of the Heavy Group label. For me, more importantly, he's a father of two as of this year, which we're definitely going to dig into. He's a husband. He's a New Yorker. So I got us, I got a shout out with the manual air horn. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm just excited to jump into the conversation, learn about this man's evolution and go man to man with the Jared Cotter. What's up, brother? Wow, that's that's quite the intro, man. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, a lot of lot of things in the world going on, but as usual, trying to tap into wellness, trying to tap into uh, keeping things keeping things level, keeping things balanced as best as I can. How are you, man? You, How are you doing? You, you have to do do that these days. Sorry, sorry to step over no, no. over you there, but uh, it's um yeah, mental health. Obviously, it's the the term of the of the times, right? Yeah, but absolutely. at the same time, thank God for that, right? Especially in our community, um, it's uh it's something that's always been kind of not even a, a secondary thing, mm-hmm. but like if you if you spoke about your mental health, you were considered a punk. You know, so <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I'm that's I'm really real. happy. <laughs> that's real. Really happy that uh, that uh, you know that that is kind of that stigma is 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 going away. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you say that about <laughs> being a punk. If you say anything related to your mental health, I mean, I could, you're a native New Yorker, like I said. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. growing up in New York, and you grew up in Long Island. Yeah, grew up in Long Island. Mm-hmm. I mean, what was that like? And you're 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 out there. You were out there in the city. Yeah, I was Spanish. Long American. Island. Uh, yeah. So when I tell people from where you're from that I'm from New York, oh, where where are you from? I'm Long Island. Ah, oh, yeah, that's not really <laughs> really New York. Yeah. Um, but but it is. You know, it's it's certainly a different um, experience in some ways, but. You know, the, the New York City is just a train ride away for, for me, and and I definitely took advantage of that growing up. Um, Long Island, at, at the time that I was growing up, was um, a, a great place to to live. Um, I'm sure it still is, but I haven't been there in a long time. Uh, um, you know, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, to be honest with you, yeah. and and uh, so I was just a, a handful of uh, just a handful of us. Uh, around town in, in Corum, New York. And, um, you know, we were closer basically to the Hamptons than, than I was to New York city. Mm. When I say that people think, Oh, you grew up rich. That's, right, right. that's not, that's not the case. <laughs> um, you know, you know, there's, there's plenty of, uh, uh, middle-class and, and lower income, uh, areas on Long Island. Yep. It's not just, uh, it's not just the, the Hamptons, you know, that people think of, um, not all, but not all white parts. I had a great childhood, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah not all, <laughs> not all, not all Diddy white yeah. parties for sure. Yeah. You know, no Russell Simmons walking around. You know, yeah. but um, uh, it was a, I had a great, great upbringing. I, I it, it kind of shaped me and, and allowed me to be able to move in 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 a lot of different circles. You know, um, being having the experience of growing up around white kids and uh, Latino kids and um, it was, uh, it was different, but, but I, I wouldn't change it. Uh, but I found out a lot about myself, uh, for, of who I was through my family and, sure. um, my grandparents. And instead of like having the quote unquote stereotypical 
you know, um, black experience, you know, my experience is a black experience. Absolutely. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's, that, that's Long Island. It was, it was a great place to grow up. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot. I have a close friend that grew up in Long Island too, and he had to break it down for me. So he was, he was the first, he was the first yeah. one to explain the inner workings of Long Island. And, you know, all I knew, like you said, and a lot of other people, it's <laughs> like, you know, the Hamptons. And then I knew Montauk, which is the end even further out. And that was like one of my favorite places yep. until it became Party City. But um, but before that, <laughs> yeah, just these little nooks. And he, sta- he started explaining, um, like you, like predominantly white. But it wasn't, you know, it was like a on a lower middle class. They got into a lot of things, you know, whether it was drugs or gang ish type of things. And it, it's it's like yeah. it, it's trippy because like like you said, you, you you have these preconceived notions. And I think that's something on a bigger scale that we should take account of, right? Is you have these preconceived notions about people, where they come from. And you just start assuming, right? You start painting this box and saying, ah, you're this, therefore you're that, therefore you're X, Y, Z. And it's just not the case. And everybody's unique upbringing is its own experience. And I love that you said that experience is a black experience because, I mean, just like everybody. I'm black. You're black. (laughs) (laughs) That in itself is an experience in this country. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, and- <laughs> I mean, in some ways, I've, I've spoken to some friends, you know, grew up like or where I grew up and, you know, we had a, a, a very black experience having to always be black in 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 those arenas, in those, you know, communities, you know, to 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 basically represent all of us because because there wasn't enough of us you know there wasn't enough of us to to you know to to basically uh i don't know explain who who we were to people who we are to people um so yeah you know my experience was was it was an awesome one i grew up grew up around great people um and uh we live in a great house and great community and and uh, I'm very thankful for it. That's dope. That's dope. So one, th- you know, one thing we like to ask around these parts. Um, I know you got IG blue check certified, but uh, here at Man to Man, we like to get you <laughs> Man to Man blue check certified, based off of one question. Okay. <laughs> uh, you ready for? Okay. You okay. For okay. It? I'm ready. So uh, very well, not so simple. I'll just ask it. What does masculinity mean to you? Oh, <laughs> David, yeah. coming in hot. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah. What does masculinity mean to me? Um, I think it means to me allowing yourself to be feminine, and um, what I mean by, what I mean by that is uh, the preconceived notion that a man is supposed to be hard, is supposed to be tough, is supposed to be, um, you know, uh, just strong all the time. Um, that unrelenting uh, stigma is is very hard to bear sometimes, you know? And what it does is it, it turns into um, ego, it turns into uh, a lashing out or a meanness, I'll say, you know, to say elementary, elementarily um, uh, about, you know, how, how that feeling will in turn um, lash out because we're not meant to be that all the time. Right. Certainly there's a lot on a man's shoulders, Mm -hmm. but I think being a man is, is recognizing that you don't that you can be soft sometimes and 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 allow the the feminine side of you to to come out and um and uh you know you you just can't be tough all the time you ain't gonna get get your girl your girl ain't gonna be happy if you're (laughs) tough all the damn time you know so 
Yeah, I, 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 that's that's my my short answer, I guess. No, I dig it. I dig it. Look, no, one thing I'll tell you, and I'm going to keep saying this on every episode. I hope I never say otherwise. No two men have ever given me the same definition of masculinity, and I think to that, wow. to that, I I think it's a beautiful thing because masculinity should not be what you said, you know, people think it is or stereotypically being being tough and and big and this and that and not being able to tap in um to the feminine energy like you said. I I'm a big believer in yeah. as human beings we have masculine and feminine energy. It's just a matter of our genetic makeup that makes us think we have to tap into one more than the other, but there are variations person to person, human to human. Like it, it doesn't matter what you have that within you. Um, and I, I've noticed that even more so, and I'm going to, I'm going to volley this back to you, but I've noticed that more so having a daughter. So I have, uh, hmm. she just turned four last month, uh, got a little Pisces running awesome. around. <laughs> so four year old daughter. Yeah. And that put a lot of, perspective in my head um you know i i've always been interested in this masculine feminine energy scenario but the reality of it is when you are bringing up a little one in this world that that's real life that's like in the making now you are shaping and molding and you know putting these ideals and ways of being and living into uh this little human but you're also learning from them as well right because they have a clean yeah. slate they have no preconceived anything they have not been filtered by the world this country yeah melanation anything whiteness none of that and it's just it's pure right so they're telling they're yeah. they're coming at you with their pureness and then you're coming back with lessons learned things learned what what is this masculinity thing so you know i want to ask you um how how has that felt for you raising a son and now raising you know congratulations uh it, how how old is she thank now? you your daughter she's she's two and a half months wow. uh, that's, that's why i got these bags under my eyes <laughs> well, i still have these bags under my eyes four years later and and count it it, it doesn't yeah. go away <laughs> once you have the first one. I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't know if these are from my son or from my daughter. <laughs> um, I also have a Pisces. Uh, my son is a Pisces, oh, uh, so he just turned six. There you go. So happy birthday to your to your to your daughter Thank as you. well. Likewise. Um, <laughs> probably probably just just turned four. Yeah. Um, but thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. It's. Listen, I, I haven't been able to have any conversations with with her just yet, with Kaya sure, sure. just yet. But um, but I can tell what it's done to me already from a, from a patient's perspective, from, um, you know, even the way I speak to her so far is much different from how I speak to spoke to my son and speak to my son now. Sure. Um, you know, uh, it's funny, they were they were born around the same weight, but. I was telling my wife that she feels, but she feels smaller. She feels dainty, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think, and I think it's just in our heads. It's just, um, you know, uh, fathers and their daughters is, you know, it's just, a, it's a very special relationship. Absolutely. Um, and it's, it's already, you know, it's already changed me in a, in a very profound way. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it, man. I believe it. And, and more to come. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it, to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, you know, it, when when we found out Melanie was pregnant, um, I was just like, oh, it's another, we're having two boys. That's it. We're, we're you know, and we're, we're, we're boy parents. Yeah. And when we found out we're having a girl, it was like <laughs> mind blowing to me, yeah. you know. Um, I did not, not did, didn't know what to expect to, with that. You know, we just had a amazing experience starting to raise a son he's a great kid and he's fun and funny and um and and very much a boy right sure. you know jumping all over the place and and 
and being a being a a, a kid, a guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and but what I'm learning already is that just because I have a daughter doesn't mean that all that is going to happen as well. You know that that it's that she's going to be bouncing off the walls that she's not going to be funny and, and, you know, we'll just dive into a pool, you know, (laughs) at any, at any, you know, without any hesitation. So, you know, it's, um, I'm, I'm learning already. I've learned so much, you know, I, I think, you know, the, the, the questions you asked me earlier, you know, what does masculinity mean? I, I may have answered that differently before her. Hmm. You know, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm excited to be a hashtag girl dad. Girl dad, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what has it been like? Well, um, to the end of of your boy, what how mm. has that felt raising him and this whole idea of masculinity? Do you feel as though there are certain things because you you even mentioned. You, you thought you were going to have a second boy. So what made you think that? Yeah. Yeah. Like before I even get into that, like what made you think <laughs> you were having a, a, a second boy off the bat? There's just like a lot of boys in my family. Okay. Um, I do have two, two cousins that are girls, the three cousins that are girls, but I don't know. It was just like a very <laughs> masculine sure, sure. energy <laughs> in my family. Sure. Um, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and um I just I just assumed, you know, I grew up with a with a brother and and I don't I don't know it to be different. So I was like, oh yeah, we're just having a, another boy, Got you it. know. So I just assumed. Yeah. Um I'm I'm gl- I'm so happy that we have one of each. Yeah. All right, is it so so far these past 2 months has it shifted anything you've done differently with Cameron or has it been, you know, Nope, Cameron is, you know, we've been guiding him this way. We're going to continue this way. And now with um, yeah. with the new, with uh, Kaya, now it's, you know, taking those new approaches yeah. and feelings and, and, and things like that. As far as Cameron's concerned, um, I know that we've done a great job so far because I think what happens when you have your second you you know you you now have a newborn in the house yeah. and you you know what comes with that it's it's a lot of time spent with the newborn mm-hmm. you know it's bottles again it's diapers it's you know um crying it's late nights it's early mornings you know it's Lord it's knows. the same thing yeah. again <laughs> yeah. so right so you know what i've learned or seen with cameron is what we've what we've taught him these last 6 years is is working because he's he's been so much more uh, autonomous because our time is now divided a little bit mm. here. Yeah, you know, not our love, but our our time. Um, and he's been able to basically become a, a a bigger kid because because of it. You know, um, he's he's you know I I woke up the other day thinking that you know I'd have to go wake him up for school. And I walk out of my room into the living room and he's on the couch reading a comic book, legs crossed. And he says, hello, daddy, <laughs> in, his, in his British accent. And I'm like, who is this, who's this grown up kid, you know? And uh, it was it was it's just, you know, a testament to who he is. And he's yeah. like, no, I'm, I know I have to get up for school. Yeah. Um, daddy is, is feeding my sister and, and I have to at least get out of bed, you right. know? So he's, he's definitely turned a corner and, um, and he's, like I said earlier, he's just an awesome kid. I, I, we couldn't be more blessed. Yeah. I mean, being able to turn on an English accent, that's, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's he if i he if this kid isn't an actor or an entertainer of some sort um you know when he when he grows up i, I don't i don't know he's <laughs> he'll be successful in whatever he chooses but yeah. but uh he he's definitely got that that bug in him for sure that's dope that's dope um <laughs> so i want to bring up something that's been out there um 
keeping in the you mm-hmm. know the family conversation but now shifting um uh to the relationship with you and your wife melanie fiona for those who don't yeah. know and it's something interesting she's a big fan favorite around these black love streets so i'm hey. sure i'm sure there are many who know there may be many who don't know especially with this podcast since it is man to man she's shared her side of the story so i'm like itching to, <laughs> to know your side of the story that you know of, of how she broke up with you like you both knew when you <laughs> met you you know the love was there you were the one then you broke up i want to know why and then somebody wasn't ready for this somebody wasn't ready for that and i mean years later yeah. you have these two beautiful beings but rewind <laughs> How did we? How how did yeah. how did this ebb and flow? The in and out. What 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 happened? Yeah, I mean, Melanie's definitely better than me at like going back <laughs> and and reliving all that. Yeah. I think maybe because she was the one who broke up with me, sure. and I don't like to relive that. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, when we first met, man, it was it was um, it was fireworks. Yeah, I don't know what else, how else to ex- explain that. Nah, it was just nope. like immediate. Yep, there, there she is, mm-hmm. you know. And um, and we were on this amazing world whirlwind of of just spending so much time together all the time. Very, very like quality time with each other, having great conversation about what we wanted out of life. Um, we I couldn't remember if we started traveling before or after, but. But, you know, we took these amazing trips together to Asia. Like it was we did a lot yeah. in a in a short amount of time and it was very intensive. And I think I think after maybe a, was it six or eight months um, of, of all that, like just real intense um, relationship right out the gate, um, I can't say that I got scared, but it, there was definitely a um, a step back that I took hmm. um, that I wasn't, and it was it was subconscious. It was, it was not something that I like thought through. Um, Melanie is an extremely connected person, um, and she felt it immediately. Wow! And you know, was 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 uh, very in tune with me still is and um really said to me i don't think that you're ready for what i'm ready for Mm. and i love you but i love me and i need to protect myself um and you need to go and do whatever you need to do um and when when you do that and you're ready to come back. Wow. Uh, and I, it, it was like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because we, I was like, we've, we've done this. I've, I've, I've said yes to that. And, and we would, you know, blah, blah, blah. we're in it, babe. Yeah. And uh, she, she wanted um, what she called exceptional love. Wow. And, and it took me a second to, and I'm, 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 so, you know, talk about, I don't know if the masculine <laughs> part of, of a man will admit that things like this, right? Right, But um, uh, she, she was just right, mm. you know? She was right about it all. And, and, and I was so, um, it was so admirable that she knew what she wanted for herself. And I realized that I didn't know what I wanted. So uh, she broke up with me and um, for for six months, I was kind of like it, it was it was a little bit of uh, I, I, my ego kicked in at first. Like, course, what, man, course. what are you talking about? I'm, I'm this, I'm that. You know, I got this. Yeah. I sold all these records. You know, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And it was like, yeah, forget it, you know, but I couldn't. I just, I just couldn't forget, forget her. I couldn't forget it. Sure. And, um, and, uh, eventually I, I, uh, 
I realized what she needed and, uh, and what, what I needed also though, you know? Um, and I think once anyone realizes those two things, what your partner needs and what you need, and you can kind of meet each other in the middle, right? That's when a successful relationship happens. And, um, you know, and since then we've been trying to give each other what, what, what each other needs. And, and, uh, I certainly know what she needs cause she will tell me <laughs> off the bat. I'm telling you right now. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, and you know, I, I just, uh, listen, she, she basically it all comes down to, she was further down the line and I needed a moment to catch up. And, um, I'm so glad I put my running shoes on. Ah, there you go. I like that. I like that. Do you think now? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've heard, and there are interesting conversations around this where people have said sometimes, you know, when you've met the one air quotes, and then there's a timing where to your point where, Melanie was ready. She was like, I'm ready. I'm ready to be committed. And you were like, subconsciously, eh, yeah, I love it all. But eh, mm-hmm. am I though? You know, what was there something that stood out to you that said, hmm, I got to do this, or maybe it was a traumatic experience, or maybe it was uh, just just you having to feel that confidence or that knowingness? Did was there something in particular or did, did it just feel like you just needed this time to realize what you were missing out on? Or I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So I, I, yeah, no, I, th- I, th- I, th- I think sometimes as guys or, or men, mm-hmm. we, um, we're so used to playing the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're so used to, um, being just the, the, the player yeah. I'll, I'll say, yeah. you know, and not that I was dating any other, anyone else. I, I wasn't, but you know, the, I, I said, I wasn't scared. Maybe I was scared. You know, uh, I was scared to kind of make that, that leap to, to, to being fully, fully committed and fully in it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, wrap your mind around that, because it's one thing to like be exclusive. It's another thing to be a partner. Yeah. And that's what Melanie was looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think I needed some time to wake up to that. Um, it's a lot better men to be a partner to someone that deserves it than to, um, be running in them streets. I'm telling you, you know, it's just, it's just so much better to be able to share um, your life, even for a short amount of time. Like, even if it's just someone like you're you're dating, but you love this person. Like, you know, I see I see some of some of my single guy friends. They'll they'll be, like, yeah, I'm dating this girl, but you know, I got this chick in, in New York. Right, I got this got other this girl shit. in Cali when I'm there. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's just like. So wait a second, bro. You you actually not giving all this the the time that it deserves to see if this person is actually worth your time right and if and to be honest you may not be worth hers and that's kind of messed up you know um you know i think we've all made that mistake especially as guys you know Uh, but but um anyway yeah i don't know where i was going with that but but, no uh, it's a you know it's a trip because (laughs) this has come up this has come up a few times i've spoken about this in the past too where you, you know that that um, with being a, a player and that mentality, and I believe, you know, in melanated communities, it, it's a bit more prominent. Like that's the sure you know Latin community. That's the machismo. Our black community. It's just yeah. you know it's it's about being that dude. Like if you can you know yeah yep. x amount of numbers and show off, and it almost becomes this scenario where you're doing you're doing it for everybody else but yourself like Mm. you know it's just like here look what i got look what i'm doing i got this 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 i got this many numbers this many girls and then it's the braggadocious of it all but like you said and i I, and i i truly believe what 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 you were saying I, i as soon as you said it 
and and the the being exclusive versus being a partner that hit because I can recollect when I was in those moments too, right? It's like, yeah, you're with somebody, that's your girl, blah, blah, blah. But mentally, emotionally, is is it are you fully there with them or are you looking at the side right. of the eye just in case? You know what I mean? And and going right. back into that mentality of, oh, I gotta make sure I keep my player card and blah blah blah. And you know, just <laughs> just all yeah. that talk. So it's wild. And I would love, and, I, and I'm I'm really glad you said what you said a moment ago about um, telling the men out there, there is this beauty when you can find it and when you can, mm-hmm. even if it's short-lived, give your full attention to the person you're being exclusive with for the opportunity and hopefully being able to fully experience that person and all that there is because potentially there there's something greater there you know i i i love saying um one plus one equals three that when you bring two people together you're bringing your relationship their relationship of them to themselves and then you both create this relationship together right so you have three identities Mm, i love that in effect and that's just i mean you just magnify by doing so but if it's always this i'm just with the person physically where where is it to go and to your point it's it's you know it's time wasted you could be wasting that other person's time because like you and melanie were talking about she was ready she didn't want to be you know waiting longer and have you stringing along and you need to find yourself you need to understand what it takes to be, you know, fully committed and present in the relationship. So one, I appreciate you telling your side of the story, but I also appreciate you being open about, about expressing these feelings and these perspectives, because again, I I feel like, especially going through a breakup and, and you hit that where she broke up with you. So when, when that hits the masculine ego, Mm-hmm. It's like ah, oh, whatever, you know. It's like <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. All right, <laughs> cool. Watch, yep. watch me now, you know. And then a lot of guys yep. go into that. Okay, well now I'm really gonna date. Now I'm really gonna show out. But you're just going further and further from yourself. You're going further and further from the opportunity, and you never really gave yourself a chance in the race. Um, so that other metaphor is dope too. With um, with putting your running shoes on. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And if you, you know, whenever, whenever uh, you hear stories about that, like where the guy or even, even the woman, you know, starts, you know, break the, the breakup happens and then they, they're just like on a rampage, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, yeah. In every, in every story you hear in every movie and every, whatever the case may be, they always will come back to the realization that it that was wrong, yeah. you know. Yeah. They always do that. That they found themselves finally when they were either alone or with the person that they ultimately wanted to be with. Right. You know. Right. So don't waste the time, you know, doing all that other nonsense. Um, you know, when you're young, you're young. But like I'm talking about when you're 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 an adult and and ready to make some some real progress and forward movement in your life. Um, that's why I call it a, like Melanie's my partner. Like yeah, yeah, she's my wife. She's my girl. You know all these other things. But at the end of the day, we have a family business. You know, and 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 she and I are are fifty fifty partners. Oh, I love that. I love that. Have you <clears throat> being partners? Have you seen yourself, so beyond growing in this relationship together, did you come from that point where you had to sort of find yourself, sort of understand you were ready for a commitment, was there a point, maybe maybe it was that time or maybe it was sometime after where you then said as a person, maybe there's some more development maybe there's some more growth internally because usually when you do find the the partner in life 
they tend to bring it out of you. I, I feel like it, you know, with yeah. myself and my relationship, I had all these interests and different things and wellness and all of that. But it's when I connected with with my partner, and it's funny you use partner too. Um, that's when that's when I really started growing. That's when I started like really tapping in and and trying to evolve as as a person as David uh and to really understand myself and and start giving myself that self-love she's a big promote proponent excuse me in ensuring i have that so that i can give back um and i know mm -hmm. thankfully that's starting to be in in like the commercial social media all of that of you know you can't pour from an empty cup i'm glad that type of phrasing and that understanding is becoming more and more of a norm because, you know, to the point, mm -hmm. you know, rewinding from the beginning, like this wasn't even a conversation, like women talk like that. And, you know, for men, you know, it, it wasn't even a thought, but I'm glad we yeah. can talk about that too. And it's so important, um, you know, with my personal experiences as well to be able to start realizing that. And I fall off, <laughs> every so often but thankfully she's there to put me back on track yeah have you felt that being with melanie like once once the commitment happened once you were both partners in this thing called life is is was was there some development or, or new ways of seeing yourself that started happening oh definitely i mean it, it's it's amazing um how the universe god whoever you are connected with or whatever you're connected with um, starts rewarding you for your decision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I, I started to, to, to really find who I was. I still am, to be honest with you. You know, I think we're always learning. We're always, you know, evolving. I shouldn't say changing. We're always evolving. Um, and, uh, and certainly making the decision to be her partner, um, was a huge part in my, my development because she's like, if anyone knows Melanie, she's like my personal Oprah, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I get, I get to wake up, I get to wake up to a wellness guru <laughs> nearly every day. Dope. Um, so, so we're, we're always, we're always working on, on something and she's always working on herself too. She's, she's not, she's not, um, you know, blind to the fact that we all, we all need to grow more, you know? Um, but I certainly, I certainly noticed a difference. I think, um, you know, my business actually started to take off. I was more, more focused, um, on, on what I was doing, um, um, uh, in my business. So naturally, financially, I started to grow even, even more with that. Um, you know, she, she, uh, at least, you know, I st to be honest with you, I still like, uh, you know, look at her with a side eye sometimes when she starts bringing out her crystals and things like <laughs> that. But I've learned to, I've learned to, you know, respect that and, and, and see the power in it, you know, um, uh, so yeah, man, I'm, I'm always on a, on a journey. Um, I think what I need to work on is my work life balance, mm. you know, something I definitely need to work on. I'm, I'm constantly working like up to the point of this pod, yeah. you know, you know, um, f uh, filming and recording this podcast. I was sending my last text out, you know, we had to stop for a second. Um, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm still learning to work with that. And, she, and, you know, we work on that together. She kind of leaves me alone <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and lets me kind of develop on my own on that one. But, uh, but yeah, man, it's, it's definitely something that, that the, the universe rewards you for that the universe rewards you for once you make that decision to, 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 to make a commitment, um, whatever that may be, I think. Yeah. No, I, I still believe in that. And I, I love you, uh, phrasing it that way. Um, so, so with the growth and because this is a wellness podcast in all its forms, um, mm -hmm. another thing mm -hmm. I like to ask is to this point. So since you have grown and you are in, in development and man, I'm just, sorry, I'm still, I'm still on the point 
of you talking about the the balance because I'm I'm guilty of that too. Mm-hmm. It, it's um I've yeah. I've gone through a lot of burnout, especially these past couple of years. Like I can pinpoint yes. exactly when it happened, exactly when I felt it. So I try to yes. root myself, anchor myself with certain which I'm working on, making non negotiables to myself um mm. <clears throat> with my morning routine so i'm one of those 5 amers because that's all the time because ananda will uh, my daughter she will be up at a certain time she's a child she knows no different she's always up at a certain time yep. so i gotta make sure i can yep. get in my you know few non-negotiables and and then then it's ananda time then it's daddy daddy ananda time but um what a beautiful name ananda oh thank great. you thank you yeah, it's um, yeah, sure. Sanskrit um, for uh, blissful joy and happiness, and she brings it every day, man. She brings it every day, and I. Oh, that's that, awesome! Yeah. So only only the second time that I've heard that name, um, Ananda Lewis, right? Was her name Ananda back Lewis, in the day? Yeah, that was. The- <laughs> uh, she was a VJ on MTV. Yeah, man. And yeah, MTV BET. Yeah. 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 Ananda Lewis, shout out yeah. <laughs> if Incredible. you come across this, but yeah. Shout out. <laughs> who, right. Who knew that you, we would shout out Ananda Lewis today? That's amazing. There you go. <laughs> 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 um, what I was trying to get to was what does your, do you have a routine uh, that addresses mind body and or soul hmm. on a daily basis morning night over the course of the day that are your anchors see david this is what i'm working on man yeah i, look, I feel <laughs> listen, brother, this thing just uh, happened this is a, yeah this is years in progress getting to where i'm at and i don't even get all three in like uh-huh. i want to nevertheless we're works in progress right <laughs> It works in progress and it's something I think, um, yeah, I definitely need to work on it. You know, where we're at right now, where I'm at right now with, the, with the new baby mm-hmm. is, um, it's like, you know, you know, this, it's like a, a bomb is sent into your house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it, it blows everything up yep. and you kind of like have to wait for the dust to settle to see where you can fit in. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we're, you know, we're, we're in that stage right now, but, certainly um, routine needs to happen. I will say though, my whole life being a creative, you know, I started out as a songwriter and as an artist, um, routine isn't necessarily uh, what goes hand in hand with people who are creatives, right? right? right, right. So um, it was never really a part of my practice, Um, um, but, now being an executive and, um, you know, with, with an extensive client client list, um, it is something that I need to, to definitely begin to implement, especially now with two kids. Um, it's just, it's just necessary. And and to your point, you know, waking up at 5am, it just kind of comes with the territory, right? You, you, you have to, um, make those quote unquote sacrifices to make sure that you just get things done. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, I, you know, I, <clears throat> one thing I've, I've said before is I, I ask that question. I don't always, and maybe I should start prefacing. I don't always expect people to have a routine because, you know, in life, like you said, <laughs> I mean, especially being a creative, I mean, what, what is the routine, you know, on a daily basis, you're trying to source in, inspiration in whatever way, spiritually connecting to source or however you label or, yeah, you know, going for a walk and just having it hit you or you just sit down and you're like, okay, I'm a right, I'm a write this song. I'm a write this script. I'm a write this treatment or I'm a, I'm a write this poem. Yep. And it just doesn't hit because you're like trying to force it. But yep. you know, I'm, I'm sure you know this already. It, it, it happens when you least expect it. It's just boom you know, and, and you get that epiphany and it's like, okay, it's go time. So you can't really stick to the, oh yeah, at Mm -hmm. 5am, I'm going to get this epiphany (laughs) about this song or about this artist. (laughs) Right, right. Exactly. It's going to come when it's going to come, but there are those things 
that we can try to build in to keep our heads level, to keep our bodies right, to keep our um, spiritual. So, you know, with Melanie, it may not be the at a certain time of day, but she'll throw those crystals in front of you and, you know, it's go time. <laughs> or you laugh about it yep. and you go do your <laughs> own thing. But I think there are those things we uh, anchor. And I, yeah, for you right now, and I also failed to realize the two-month-old scenario and where that's at. That's the, like we talked about, the and, and people, it's real. If you have not had a child yet, it's real. And if you've had a child, I'm, I'm sure you can relate and, and feel for this man right now because I'm out of it and I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I'm going through it again, but, you know, we'll see. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> well the dude it was tough it was tough you know to to find out we were pregnant after five years and, yeah. and knowing that um okay we gotta go all you know back to the beginning yeah back to the beginning of and i mentioned this earlier the the diapers and the bottles and the crying and you know and the the, the late nights and the early mornings it's um it's a thing it's a thing and but once you're through it um there's nothing more beautiful you know, even, even, even honestly, even going through it is, it's, it's a, just a beautiful process. It's a beautiful time. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it is challenging. It is, it is challenging. challenging. I, I, I miss meditating. Mm. I do. I miss meditating. I started a record label, uh, with my partner, um, not Melanie, my, my business partner. <laughs> uh, and, um, it's called still. And basically what still is, is, um, uh, a record label of, of all meditation music. Oh, dope. I need so, that. So, um, yeah, it's it's super dope. And, and he and I, we, we are, are uh, big, big proponents of, of, um, of wellness and, um, you know, having a music to, 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 to listen to while you're being still mm -hmm. uh, was very really important to us. So we call it still uh, sit till I learn love. Mm, and love um, and uh, it's, it's uh, not not to. Not to plug anything, but it's available now. Oh, plug it, because I'm about to ask, where is it available? Where can I, where can I stream it? Everywhere, man. Everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. Okay. It's uh, on Spotify, Apple, Apple Music, M Amazon Music, uh, wherever you title, wherever you listen to, to, wherever you stream, it's on. I'm with it. I am with that. Um, yeah, and when, when it comes to something like that, plug away, because I, look, I, I need that. I could... <sighs> man, use a dose of that. And I think that's something else. It's, you know, sometimes we, we have our things, but to switch it up, like I've, I've never meditated to music. So the moment you said that, mm. I was like, I could vibe to that because music's huge. It's like a huge part of my life. I, I, um, I say to a lot of my friends, like I have all these songs in my head that are soundtracks to my life as I'm going through life. If I'm doing mm -hmm. something little, There'll be a, you know, any track or rock, reggae, hip hop, whatever, whatever the case may be. But there's always some song or lyric or phrase that I'm just always smirking about to myself because I'm like, ah, this goes right into this. And this conversation, I didn't want to interrupt mm. you, but there were so many songs uh, <laughs> that was popping up in my head. And I think to have <laughs> music, because uh, I, I do think music is therapy. It's, it's therapeutic for me. Uh, I also think for meditating, that's beautiful. And, and studies are out there. It, it's proven, you know, certain frequencies do help your heart rate, your calmness, yes. get you hyped. I mean, that's why we listen to hip hop yep. in the gym to throw down because it gets us hyped. It gets the heart rate up. And same thing with being able to be still and those frequencies hit and you just absolutely out. so I'm, I'm i'm a fan i'm intrigued. absolutely yeah man i mean it listen it's not um there there are a few um uh singing uh songs on there um there's a wonderful artist uh by the name of uh john v who's who's done a lot of work with um uh jay shetty and and mm -hmm. uh, the smiths nice. um who's 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 available on our, our record label she's amazing um, and, um, yeah, but it's, it's a beautiful way to kind of just be still. So that's why it's called still. I love it. Love it. <sighs> Listen, I want to be respectful of your time. I'm appreciative. We had this time to get together, uh, but we are coming up on that time. So 
think there's a part two in the making here because uh, I, I could now I'm like in the flow with you. Now I got your vibe. I picked up on your vibe. Now I'm ready to go deep. <laughs> So uh, we're, we're going to have to make a part two, figure it out. Once you get some uh, more sleep, let's do it. <laughs> let's um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's definitely do it. Uh, are there any, whenever that will be, whenever that'll be. I mean, uh, I'll check in with you from time to time. Let's <laughs> let's let's see. What yeah, happening. for sure. Um, are there any projects, though, that you would like to plug or that are coming out to let the people know about? Not at the moment, man. I'm I'm always working on something. Um, you know, uh, we're about to start rolling out Bozzy again. If you guys are familiar with him, um, we also have uh, Keanu Lede coming soon uh, again. And and uh, and I'm pushing, pushing. I promise you, I'm pushing to get Melanie back in the studio. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, you know, just whenever she whenever she's ready. Um, but yeah, definitely check out still. And I'm also working on a bunch of other wellness initiatives that I'll, I'll definitely come back and tell you about. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it's a, it's a special time, and and uh, really just just uh, embracing this this time with, with our with our daughter, uh, Kaya Love. Oh, it's Kaya Love. Oh, that, oh, now that that's Kaya is yeah. already a beautiful name, but Kaya Love, that's woo, that hit, that's dope. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Listen, brother, like I said, we're going to do a part two. Thank you for making time for this conversation and going man to man with me today. Black Love Fam, you can follow Jared at Jared Cotter, C O T T E R, on IG. Are you on any other socials we should know about? Yeah, I'm on all, on all of them. Oh, Wherever you're at, I'm right. on uh, <laughs> at, J- at Jared Cotter. All right, that's what's up. Uh, and in the meantime, Black Love fam, make sure to tell another brother, king or queen about man to man so we can keep convos like this going and keep building each other up. And if there's someone you want to hear from, connect with me on Instagram at Waziki, W-A-S-I-C-K-I. And let's get him on the show and have a beautiful conversation like I just did with Jared. So until next week, peace, love, and put your running shoes on. <laughs> 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 it was a pleasure. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>